I am. It was. It, it's a. It's a British movie, independent. You never know. You, you can only hope. I read the screenplay and loved it. The evolution from reading it to being on set making it was less than a month. It was. It was a window, and the producers were like, "If you're into it, then we can make it now." And it literally was like that. So to see the finished product, I am happy with it. it I think that the screenplay did come to life. So I'm very excited about it. Well, like I said, I was asked if I wanted to be a part of it. We spoke in Los Angeles you know, on, the, on the phone for about three hours just discussing how unanimous our, our views were about the film. And like, he told me his expectations and it was a, like a, just, a, I guess, a conversation about how I viewed him and what, how much I liked certain elements. And it really was just a case of wanting to make a movie that was, I don't know, I guess, not stereotypical hitman movie. You know, it wasn't, it's not about an assassin. It's a, it's a kind of a character study. And there is some action in there, but I think it would appeal both to boys and girls, you know what I mean? It's a, it's a smart film, and um, I could tell by speaking to Perry, the director, that that's the, he wanted to make a thinking man's action movie rather than just, a, just bangs and whistles for the sake of it. Well, I, I also see the director of photography, lovely guy, Will. He's, he's a, we had a, a great DP and a director that certainly knew the film he was making because he wrote it and he wanted to direct that movie he wrote, understandably, and producing it, so I knew he was invested. And then speaking to the producers and just getting a sense that everybody involved really wanted to at least achieve the best movie they could, so yeah. making a decision on that really, and, having, and also knowing that I knew how I would want to play a character, and they seemed to be okay with that kind of concept, and uh, it, was, it was like game on, it was like, let's do it. It was, yeah, it was kind of when I read the, the screenplay, I was like, it's kind of a lonely read in a, in a really lovely way. And the movie achieves that, I think, because it's not dialogue heavy. And that's not as easy as people think because you're very dependent upon the internalized feelings and how visual that is and how that's shot. And when I read it I, at home, I, was, I felt kind of very aware of his isolation and very aware of his pain. And I wanted it to be driven by I guess there's this tiny little scene where he's in the, his own kitchen where he sees two glasses and he, he hasn't seen that before. He's never, never seen two wine glasses on a table for years because he doesn't live that way. He's very meticulous for his own survival. And I think love unexpectedly illuminated massive elements of his life and realized how dysfunctional it was and how much it was not serving him in any way. And uh, uh, I don't know, I just, I felt, I, I enjoyed the loneliness and the melancholy kind of experience of reading it. I was beginning to think you weren't going to come. My apologies, I had a few loose ends. I liked it, it was kind of intentionally unglamorous, and, but when it needed to be, it had moments like the fights, whatever, but it, it really was fly on the wall kind of screenplay. And well, that's why I said it's like a character piece or a character study and as observing him. And I, I felt, really felt that we were trying to achieve that kind of the epiphany that he has and the fear of love that he clearly has and the lack of glamour. And it, we're not trying to make him look as cool as he can, but there's something very kind of stylish about the way the film's been shot so you don't ever feel like you're being given this kind of, kind of action shot. But it's very stylish, but it's not stylish around the main characters, just shot that way. So I don't know, I just think we achieved, we did achieve the movie that we wanted. Um, and for a small independent British movie, I think I'm, I'm just, I'm kind of stoked about it. I'm a sucker for an, an independent movie, primarily because of the camaraderie that you get on those sets. I mean, you got, we shot this in 18 days. And so you know that every morning you get up, you have to make that movie happen. And everybody's there for the love of film. And you know, you look around, you know nobody's getting rich on the movie. They're there because they want this film to be the best it can be and they want to, they're, they're, they're lovers of film. And there's that unanimous kind of underscore for all of us on these independent films. And whether they be American independent movies or, or British ones, there's that camaraderie that is so enticing to me. Because the, the studio movies, lots of money and you get treated really well and you, when you're doing promotion, you're sometimes on a private jet and all the good stuff. But the truth is when you're sitting drinking the beer with the DP and a couple of the costume department and a makeup girl and, you, and you're having a beer at the end of the day and kind of all really elated and happy about what you've just achieved, it's, uh, to not be turned on by that would be, would be absurd. And so it, it just keeps me coming back for more.
I'm, I'll be honest with you, people s seem to think that I've kind of avoided British film, but it's taken a while for British filmmakers to want me to do their movies. I think what's happened is some of the younger filmmakers who don't really care about, say, my Bross days, because it was such a long time ago. I like, I, I mean, I wouldn't, I'd like Luke to be in my movie, and that's happening more and more and more. I mean, I'm doing another movie, supposedly, with a lot of people involved in this producer-wise and uh, distribution. Uh, that we shoot in London and France. It's a kind of a, a road movie. It's really, really hip. And again, it's a British film. So uh, that's scheduled at the moment. If we can work out the exact dates, it's scheduled to shoot at the end of the year. So that'd be a, yet another British movie. So I'm excited. Yeah, absolutely. I said, like, the great thing, the way we made it work is the stunt coordinator was the guy I fought in the movie. So he was the stunt, stunt, stunt coordinator for our film. And he's the guy I'm fighting. And so what it means is as we're working out that fight, and I was very, very, very involved in, in that. It was him and I basically just working out the moves. I'm a big believer in fights. They've got to be as realistic as the drama. So if you get smacked here, like you, you, or stomach, whatever, you've got to think, where am I at that point? Where is he coming in? How can I recover from that? It can't always look pretty. It has to look real. And uh, fighting the stunt coordinator and having the stunt coordinator as the actor I'm working with was the best thing to do because it saved a lot of time. I can only hope so. I'm a, I'm a big fan of anyone, anyone achieving things. I think as we have that expression, Great Britain, and I think it could be greater if we encourage each other. So it's, as a British filmmaker, I, I would love him nothing more to see him directing a massive American film and then coming back and doing British film and doing both, both sides of the pond. And I, uh, I think he'd be deserving of it because he's, he did a great job. He really did.